Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 2. It's time for our ceremonial beginning of episode to Lizard Man Slaughter. Uh, notice carefully saying, uh, not saying which side is slaughtering which. <laughs> there are lizard men, there will be a slaughter. This looks, it's pretty hard for me to read. There are five units of sources and I'm always concerned about that. There are four Croxigors. That's a real thing. Um, it does seem to be easier to get Croxigors to go away, like... We've broken Croxigors and had them set them off running multiple times. I think these are bronze chevrons, not gold. Yeah, okay. I do wish that the coloration on those was slightly different. It would probably be easier to tell if anybody in this army was gold. But because they're all the same color, I couldn't tell which one it was. The Fire Leech Bullet Pterodon Riders are fairly scary, but we actually have a lot of ranged in this army with the, uh, the Gunner Runners and stuff. I don't think they'll be an issue. The Solar Engine Bastilladon is something I'm concerned about. I'm not sure that we've seen one of these before, have we? These are the ones that shoot the... they shoot lasers. They are laser dinosaurs. I don't think I want to devote any food to Menace Below. I think we're going to roll with six charges. Remember, we have warp bombs for this fight. I'm not sure that we will win this. We have our walls. They're going to have to do siege stuff, but they've been at us for a couple of turns. They definitely have a couple of towers built at least. We have catapults. I've always found these catapults seem to be very good. Um, the the Plague Claw Contagion effect uh, seems to be really powerful. You know, we started having a lot of problems with Skrulk's army as soon as we lost his catapult, I feel like. So... Uh, and then, you know, there are five units of skinks. Sorry, seven, six units of skinks. Four and two units of skinks. They got some of these cold one riders that, I, in my opinion, are, they don't seem to be great. Uh, at least, you know, from, from having encountered them a bunch of times, it seems like these are the units of the enemy force that we route the most easily when they show up. I don't know. It might be doable. It really depends on how the Bastilladon works out. I think that's a, that's a big X factor here. Especially if it can just, like, use lasers to punch holes in the walls or anything, you know? Like, I'm sure it won't be able to do it in one shot, but it is sort of an artillery thing. And the beam blinds people when it hits them. I'm not 100% sure what the what the meaning of that really is. Like, what, is, what does being blinded mean? I assume it's a massive debuff to uh, melee attack. Probably also melee defense. And we do have Halberd Storm Vermin, which should be pretty good against Croxigors. Croxigors are large. A big part of their thing is that they're armored, but we have large. We have a lot of armor piercing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to read this one. I guess we'll see. So they were able to put together three towers, four towers. Do they have any rams? No, I think they... Uh, I think they went all towers, and they figured they'd just go over the walls, and if it comes right down to it, they can probably break the door down with the Bastilladon. Alright, well, this was smart on their part. I think I think this is the way they should have done this. So, I'm going to pull... Should I pull the guys from this wall? Like, I don't... This force doesn't have a way of getting through the... I guess Croxigors can maybe beat the door down? Maybe. But I'm wondering if I should focus my forces over here on the side with all the towers. You notice the game has set up um, melee on the wall by the towers. That's no good. Right, let's have you guys be here. I really want ranged in front on this wall. Okay, that's good. Let's grab these units. Move them over here. Yeah. Hold on, let's pull them off the wall for a second. So I don't particularly need Clan Rants with shields on the walls right at, right at this moment. Let's Let's make sure that we have ranged units at the front of the walls over here so that we can get some amount of um, unit fire at the same time that we're getting our uh, tower fire off. 
and then we'll put the clan rats back on the walls in a reasonable place because I do want to be able to hold the wall a little bit. We're going to have a much easier time fighting from the wall against things like croxigors. You know, basically stuff that can't get up there with us. So yeah, we'll put melee on this, uh, more melee on this side. And then we have a unit of shields here. Storm vermin waiting at the gate. Okay, where's my, uh, where's my lord? Alright, for some reason our catapults have been placed facing backwards. Can the catapults hit? Okay, they can hit pretty deep into the field from here. I'm a little concerned about all this construction stuff. Maybe we could um, pull them back a little bit into the side just so they won't hit this. Yeah, they'll have a, fi they'll have a shot pretty quickly. But I want the warp engineer to be closer to the wall so we can fire some spells over the wall. Honestly, I don't want this to be here either. Let's um, let's pull these guys up to this side as well. Maybe not all the way so that they can respond a little, you know, if the things go south on the walls or if things go south at the other door. Okay. So as soon as the towers are under our control, let's make sure that we are targeting... Do I want to try to bring down the siege towers? I definitely can't bring them all down, so maybe I should just focus on units? Hmm. I'm actually not sure... Do I, do I have a stat card for the tower? I don't. I'm not sure what the tower's damage type is. Um, intuitively, it makes sense to me to shoot at the large dinosaurs, right? It seems like it would be very difficult to miss them. We could try to bring down a siege tower. I'm usually able to do that. And doing that does severely damage the unit within. Ah, but there's not a lot of places where we have siege towers that are going to be... Okay, here. We'll target this one. In my experience, it usually takes like two towers firing on a siege tower uh, for an extended period of time for it to go down. I think, honestly, let's start with the Pterodon Riders on this side, and you guys, I don't know, just shoot a unit of Croxigors. I'm way more worried about Croxigors than I am about cold ones. And you guys are not to move. These are Sauruses. Okay. I'm just going to tell the catapult to do that. If you got to move forward a little bit, then do it. Uh-oh. Are they moving to a sensible location, though? Sort of doesn't look like it. Okay, okay, they're figuring it out. So yeah, we're getting some good damage on these towers. But we're at least causing the sources to sort of run aside. Actually, it looks like we're going to take the towers down a lot earlier than I thought we would. Do we have upgraded tower damage? Is that a thing in this game? In the first game, some of the siege buildings would increase the damage dealt by your towers. Um, and we haven't had... It hasn't said that on any of our defensive structures, but maybe it's still a thing. So yeah, we'll be able to break that siege tower down too. They'll only be able to get in with two of them. I think that's a good start. There's no way we're going to deal enough damage to this one to bring it down, right? Then let's try. Yeah, we only have one tower on it. And we'll start to get slinger shots in. I don't know if those even do meaningful damage against uh, a siege tower. I, maybe we will get it. If they only actually manage to dock one tower, that would be really bad for them. Here come the ladders, though. So these are sources. They're sources with spears. So not totally ideal. Of 
Good catapulting. Okay. Warp lightning can be fired on the walls. Uh, good luck, Night Runners. Okay, let's get some iron damage to them. Ew. Did you guys just hear them yell, don't squirt? Okay. They did, in fact, smash the gates on this side. Yeah. Was it Croxigors? Okay. Well, I mean, we have the right guys in place. I'm going to grab this unit of storm vermin. I'm sure they're working on the gates over here, too. How, what's my gate strength like? Well, yeah, all right. I'm going to pull this unit of storm vermin over here. I was kind of hoping the Croxigors wouldn't be able to do siege damage. I should have known. They are technically monstrous infantry. That is all it takes. Uh, yeah, this is pretty... Should we retreat from the walls, maybe? We might want to retreat from the walls. We managed to break a unit of Saurus Spears pretty badly. The Pterodon Riders are already pretty much out of commission. Yeah, honestly, that was a pretty good first phase of the battle, I feel like. I don't know that we'll win, but I have more hope now than I did before. We gotta make sure that we keep the uh, keep the warp lightning coming. Cause this wall siege situation was like pretty ideal for it, and we had nothing else to do with our uh, wins. Yeah, come on through. Water's fine. Wow, that did a lot of damage. Alright, well, Storm, this is the thing for Storm Burning. I wish we could... I wish we could dismount the wall to this side. Okay, these are skinks. We're getting... Getting skinked here. Um... Yeah, you guys go over and deal with that. The Poison Wind Globadiers should get off the wall. We're gonna need them down here shooting. These are one of our few anti-large options. So we're gonna need... Hmm... I think I think they're re reading the order, but they're not the order. The arrow's not appearing. That's fine. Okay, so we're getting some fine done work done up here. Warp lightning is a very good spell. <laughs> yup, it's pretty all right. Can you guys retreat and let the melee handle it. Winning that fight. Ready, ready. I wonder. How much damage will it do to a Bastillodon? Not very much, is the answer to that question. I do seem to have gotten its attention. What you guys doing? Get over here and shoot. I'm gonna. I wonder if they're having problems because skirmish mode, enemies are too close to them. But they should be able to, um... It seems like they're trying to run into melee. Okay, no, they're, throw they're throwing the globes. They're throwing the globes. Oh, wow. The volley of globes is really effective. Okay, hold up. Paid a lot of attention to this part of the battle. Okay, our Halberd Storm Vermin are doing well. This is Skinks. Can you guys maybe handle this? I need you to shoot in the back here. It may be time to start uh, start bringing in the Menace. Yep, we got dudes all up in our catapults. Defensive Menace below. I mean, yeah, we gotta hold the we gotta hold the city center. You guys. I don't mind if we lose a little bit on the walls if it keeps those guys up there. So 
Skirmish mode off, as always. And do we have anywhere that a warp bomb makes sense? No, not right now. Right, let's just get right up on these guys, deny them their charge bonus. And then warp bomb the, the instant that that makes sense. I, I assume we're going to lose pretty badly in one-on-one -on -one here. Go chase some skinks around. That always makes you feel better. Show me something. Come on. Your hit points are significantly greater than 50%, are they? There we go. God, warp bombs are powerful. Holy crap. Um, yeah, this needs to wrap up because we need dudes. We need dudes back in the city center. All right, you guys. Get over here. Are you actually able to... Please get off the wall. This is a good time for the slingers to get off the wall. Man, there's still an awful lot of... Everybody in this unit is alive. The unit has no hit points left. But it's like every... It's like we're reducing their hit points perfectly evenly. So everyone in the unit is still alive. Uh, the Bastilladon's actually losing. I have the Globadiers form up back here a little bit. Seems like they're getting dinosaured. Alright, we have Clan Rats available again. Let's see... Okay. They're mostly falling back, actually. Oh, no. The Croxigors are turning around. Sacrifice your lives for the team! Man, this is going a lot, a lot slower than it needs to. Slingers are engaged in melee and cannot flee. Looks like the Bastilladon's just about dead. Which means we'll be able to fall all of these guys back to... Back to the city center. Actually. Come around this side. I think we're gonna do this. Maybe this is, uh, maybe that's premature, but I th this seems to be working. Proxigors apparently are tall enough that my units can fire over each other to fight them, which is great. Yeah, I don't think Croxigors are nearly as dangerous as I was afraid they would be. That's just fleeing skinks. It's like the, the Croxigor battle over here has uh, pretty much resolved in the defeat of all parties. Drop some more rats on them. It's always the right solution. Alright, that's over. Yeah, I thought this was going to go a lot worse than it's going. Perfectly honest, all of you guys can come over here. Man, a really upsetting number of those guys are getting back up. The gunner runners are getting good range attacks in, but... What is this? Sora Spears retreating from the walls? Okay. Everybody get over here. We're going to figure this out. Gutter Runners are remarkably good at holding their own against Sauruses. 
Looks like a lot of their guys that were chased out are starting to rally, but they're very low health. If they come back in, I don't think it's a big deal. Also, man, you can just use, uh... Oh. Target the warp pump. Yeah, oh wow. I did some serious damage to that wall, actually. Yeah. All right, that was actually not even that bad. That wasn't even that difficult. We killed almost as many of us as they killed, uh, or we killed, we killed almost as many of them as they killed of us, is what I was going to say. But actually, I bet that Warp Lightning did kill quite a few of us. Poor Warlock Engineer is not credited with any kills because the, the kill count bug apparently is still a thing. Some some magic spells count kills on your caster and some don't. And I have no idea what the logic is. I think it's just some are bugged. Uh, there's no sense taking big bonuses for this, uh, this garrison army. I suppose replenishment's not irrelevant. Concerning that his army is not destroyed and they will probably come back at us. He's got to spend a couple of turns regenning though, which will give uh, which will give other lock time to get over there. Yeah, I think we got blue on the run. I wish this would stay clicked. All right, it feels like it only took 120-ish turns. We're finally coming into our own. Punch me, thing. You want me to, you, sorry, you demand that I join your war against Itza? Listen, I hate Itza as much as you do, or possibly more. There's a time and a place, though. I'm doing a scheme right now. Humans don't know how to scheme. Leave this stuff to me. Hey, we did it. Man. Stink of command. All right, let's crush this. Win battle. That replenishment is just about enough to put me back at full. And for some reason, they're still alive. Okay. It's a good source of food, at least, putting down rebellions. Hmm. So here's the thing. On the water, we only get auto-resolve. So it looks like I'm allowed to attack him, but I'm concerned that uh, I will not be able to win that battle. Because I don't get to fight it manually. And the, uh... The auto-resolve seems to be pretty biased against us. But then again, that's less true against elves, it seems like. <laughs> More weapon damage. More weapon damage for this wizard. I'm gonna try some. Let's, uh, let's save the game. I'm kinda curious what the result will be. Yeah. See, I think this balance of power should be way more in our favor. These units are not that tough. Fight! Kill! Death frenzy! It's fine, I suppose. Kill Ecom! Okay. Out of curiosity, can we now get Tor Elisar to back off? Aye, we will crush you like the Man. vermin you are. They still think they're winning, despite the fact that every army they've sent over here has been completely annihilated very quickly. None of the forces who like us can trade with us because they don't have ports. Okay. Or rather, we got all the ones that can trade with us. Oh, man. The upkeep's coming down so much. Master Commander! This is rough. We're way too low on public order to leave, but we also really can't afford to stay. So the Citadel of Dusk is going to start construction of a Taskmaster's platform. And then we're also going to have to build one over here as soon as we have the population to do so. I mean, I might... Now that I've used this to recruit rats, I might have to tear this down, actually. So I'm just thinking... The military crackdown is 8. 
So when we leave, this place is going to wind back down toward minus four, and we need it to be positive. I guess the Taskmaster's platform, once upgraded one more time, will put us at positive public order. Be, we'll be minus eight plus six from here, so we'll be at, at plus two. Yeah, all right. I will, uh, I will leave everything in place for now. We've got to get back to the mainland. There's too much stuff going on. I'm glad that we dealt with this, but yeah, we can't be over here anymore. I had stuff to do. All right, speaking of stuff to do, let's crush some more territory. Uh, now, this should be very easy. But let's go ahead and bring both of our armies. Just make this as trivial as possible. Yeah, okay. Good stuff. Overwhelming odds. Uh, we're probably not in a position where we can easily... Hmm, I do want walls. This would take us down to 52 food. Fine. We'll get more food. Yeah, we're doing a fine job on food lately. We'll uh, we'll figure it out. And another thing to trade. Okay, now it is showing that I'm getting 1300 gold from trade. The, the council's voice. Walls. Everything needs walls. Yeah, as long as we have the money to keep pumping up the uh, the income bonus in places that have like gold mines and large ports and stuff, I think we should. Are any of the cities? No, none of the cities in this province are uh, are ports. This is a ten building settlement in a four province region. Like, is it's a? I wonder if this is a place that they're going to be putting a DLC lord or something. Is it strange? Like, I don't think even... Does my capital even have 10 slots? No, it doesn't. Yeah, weird. Oh, my capital is completely capped out. We really don't need this province any... Or we really don't need this bonus anymore. But, I don't want to reduce the tax rate. We get way too much money from the capital. Uh, this doesn't really do anything. Nor does this, I guess. Martial planning will be fine. We do recruit armies in here sometimes. Oh, hey, we have exotic animals in our capital. I just didn't build the building for it because we were too busy, busy building other stuff. Well, that's fine. We'll get them from the mouth of Carveza. Okay, I think we are pretty much good for the turn. Let's go and pursue their heroes. I'm not doing the vortex ritual right now. Things are not under control enough. Uh, yeah, I'm concerned about this. If we lose due to the uh, the ritual bar, that'll be an interesting uh, an interesting thing. Like I mentioned, when I thought we were going to lose militarily, uh, generally speaking, these games tend toward the easy side, in my opinion, uh, in the sense that like it's very difficult to actually lose one, even if you even if the game is hard enough that you're not doing well, it's almost never going to kill you, and if you just persist, you will eventually win. Um, having the ability to actually lose, I think, is pretty interesting. It certainly adds a lot more weight to your decisions. Yeah. Alright. I'm not a big fan of these guys sweeping in and taking a bunch of stuff inside my territory, but... They did help us break the siege that we've been under since the beginning of the game, so I do appreciate that at least. We're gonna have to kill them, obviously. I'm hoping that they will... Oh, no. Infectic has been wounded. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, we're going to have to kill them eventually, but I'm hoping they don't turn on us until we're done with the others. Let's go ahead and, uh, well, this is a lot of our money. I guess we're operating in a significant surplus, though. Hmm, what do I want to build? Well, hold on. Let's not worry about this yet. Now let's worry about army movement. 
Oh, high vampire corruption is going to cause losses. Lastria is mine. What do the corruption levels in this region look like? Scaven corruption is at zero. Well, that's not okay. Alright, we'll walk right up to the border. And then we'll charge in. Is this dies? Okay, cool. More trade stuff. Is there any convenient ocean treasure for me to grab on the way up there? No, there is not. To land. It looks like he's headed home. Probably he realizes some stuff is going on. He can't, uh... If he doesn't head back home pretty quickly, he's not going to have a home to go back to. Alright, so we're at minus one food now. We had stabilized on food, but now we're, we're running a deficit again. We're just going to have to keep fighting. This is like, uh, it's a little bit like running a gold deficit with a large army. You can you can keep it going pretty much indefinitely as long as you never stop winning battles. Oh, that's right. There's a settlement over here to the right of the camera right now that we are going to need to deal with. Oh, I totally forgot about the elves to our west, too. That's a thing. Deal with us as all... 600 gold? That is a very insulting offer. I'm trying to, trying to assassinate our guy. I'm hoping, you know, he can do in the jungle just what he does in battle. Just bump into the guy over and over again and never take any melee damage. Oh, Lothern's ritual has failed. I think the other players must have uh, intervened. That's nice of them. Alright, Titchett's becoming a builder. Perform the Scheme of Doom to get 20 Warp Stone. Am I still... Okay, I am still accumulating Warp Stone. We don't cap at the ritual. Well, we could do the Scheme of Doom. A Doom Engineer is neat. Although... Also, they have, a, they have an upkeep cost too, don't they? How many turns do I have to get the Scheme of Doom done? Seven. 20 Warp Stone is not... That's not a useless prize. Wow. Our trade upkeep... Our trade income jumped up 700 by adding a new good. That's awesome. I don't really know if it's worth upgrading this though like it'll get us more trade income but I'm not I'm never sure quite how much increasing the amount uh, does for you huh weren't we just oh the majority type has become untainted between this turn and last it stopped being a place where we would take attrition Alright, so this will be trivial. I don't know about the Awakening. The Awakening has walls. The Star Tower doesn't. We probably should have come to the Star Tower. Well, the elves over here have been quiet for a long time. Only a fool underestimates his adversary. We're reading as more powerful no than they fool. are. I'm debating whether I think Otherlock needs to go west to potentially fend off an elven incursion, or whether he can go north and help with the Star Tower. No, let's have him go west. It's much safer. Oh, we did add... We added two trade goods. See, at 700 extra trade. Still, pretty good. I wish trade goods had a little bit more, like, mechanics attached to them. Like, if you got spices, it... It gives you spices to trade, but also, you know, plus happiness or plus growth. It's like each one could do a different thing. My solution to every uh, every mechanic in game design, though, is basically: what if we just put some more design in there? What if it does? What if it does eight more things? I just really like very dense, complicated games. I suppose I'm probably not the core target audience for most games, though. So at this point, I think it's maybe just a matter of time. 
with Shlan, uh, whatever these guys are named, Shlan Hwapek or something, Blue, whatever Blue's name is, um, yeah, I think we probably, we broke down their armies, their economy is probably not in a great place because we took their gold mine and we are rapidly rampaging through their territory. Ritual stuff happening in the background. There we go. Yeah, they're desperate. They think the jig is up. Okay. Critical failure. It turns out it's extremely easy to get injured when attempting to attack Nurgloth's Scratchy Scar. Scratchy Scar. The guy's just running through the jungle, screaming, shooting plague in all directions. I wouldn't go anywhere near that. You couldn't pay me enough. An enterprising warlock engineer has been further befouling the already noisome military rations with tiny qualities of fine powdered warp stone, and its effects are already becoming apparent. The clan rats appear more hench and jittery than usual. Whiskers twitch to unfelt breezes, and ears tremble at the call of distant voices. Melee infantry faction-wide have increased melee attack and leadership as a result. Yeah, pretty alright. It actually doesn't say they have attack... But we do have extra... Ex yeah, I think this text is not supposed to be attached to this buff. I wish we had melee attack and leadership. Alright, what's going on in Chupiatl? Oh, it's just we have a lot of ability to build stuff. Well, Shlansek definitely needs top-level walls, because we want to be able to hold on to this. I think we're... We're good on public order in the region. Three bells is enough, it turns out. So what else could I build? I could just build... Recruitment buildings, basic recruitment buildings. This region does not yet have a clan pit. Just make it easier for my my dudes to get reinforced. And actually, I think I'm going to head up toward the home region. We'll refill other locks army in the home region, and then we'll uh, we'll head to Elf Town. And obviously, let's crush this real fast. Retreat. This has trade goods. We should probably take it. Loot, find trinkets uh, for tribute. We're not high enough on food for me to feel comfortable rushing it to rank three. Also, it's a port. Ports are pretty great. Well, we're gonna have lots of money. I'm starting to worry about food. Let the bear. Star Tower has zero garrison? Huh. Why don't you go grab this ruin? And then it looks like there's a beach over here. We'll just this army should be able to take the Star Tower pretty easily. Carcass of some great sea beast. Yeah, okay, we've we've read this one before. Five thousand money. Yeah, he should be able to handle that by himself. There's an army building up in the city, but I'm not too worried about it. Wow. Well, let's scout ahead, see if they have anything else building up to the north. Okay, the Pox Marsh has another trade good and is another port. Yeah, we're going to be rolling in gold. Our problem's going to start to become food. We might have to start using the food commandment in some uh, some smaller regions. Regions that aren't producing as much money. Like, uh, if we got... No, we're not going to get Jotl back. That's right. Those guys are our allies. Ah. I see. The, the elf armies have been up here. Okay. Let's, uh... Maybe I want to run other lock up to Shadal and take on the elves from this side, because we could get some more valuable stuff right away. We could take back the mine of the bearded skulls. This could be a food production region, although it has a gold mine in it. I don't know. Actually, you know what? If we're running uh, if we're running at such a gold surplus, it won't be a big deal. Oh yes, good, good, good. If we're running at a huge gold surplus, it won't be such a big deal to take the tax hit in a couple of regions to turn them into food regions. So, all right, 
waiting on money. I gotta figure out what is the time to do the next ritual, because we do try have to try to keep up on the rituals. I mean, sorry, we have to start to catch up on the rituals. We still don't have our ritual currency city. We do get, I believe, one ritual currency from every settlement we own every turn, so we are we are expanding our, our growth in that direction. But the ritual currency city that's on our coast is now held by the Red Lizard Man faction. Oh, an army. Ah, uh, this is very annoying. Are my walls back in place? We need to build up an actual uh, garrison here. It looks like other lock may have to turn around. Yeah, you can't. You can't do that. He may as well be invulnerable. Boy, it is just the same heroes over and over again, though. I do miss when you can actually kill enemy agents. I see you. Only having the ability to wound them is a real bummer. All hail, All hail. Yeah, I guess this must have been... This must have been knocked down via siege at some point, and then they just never... Like, it's in the ruined state, and they just never rebuilt it. Yeah, another trade good. Yeah, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to turn some stuff into uh into food mode. Stink of command. All right, so I think my plan is still to go to the home region and do a little recruiting, so we could grab clan rats here. What do I want? I'd like another unit of plague monks, and then probably clan rats to fill out from there. Ooh, sensor bears would be nice to have. Do I want to sit for two turns? I'm a little concerned that we might lose... Might lose the fortress if I sit for two turns. Whatever, we can take it back. It sucks that I'm apparently going to have to establish, like, put a little army over here in the city. If we're, if we're sitting for two turns, let's grab some cool stuff. Ooh, I, we shouldn't wait for three turns. As much as I like the concept of a Doom Whale, we also don't actually know how good they are in combat, because I haven't played any battles with the army that has the Doom Wheels. And then we'll get some Clan Rats to round this out, because we don't need all expensive units. Okay, two turns. All hail, Hornet Rat! Uh, Tichet. Skaven Scorch, Death Frenzy. We don't really have... Spawns a unit of Storm Vermin. Ooh. We don't really have a built-up Ruin Grace here. Let's let's go ahead and build up his, uh, his yellow line. We'll go get blue line later. Wow. Alright, we're definitely going to need to put our two stacks back together. Now that we've gotten the solar tower, right, we just, uh, we'll have... What's it? We'll have Tidget come up and grab a couple of sea ruins on the way to reuniting with the other stack. It shouldn't be more than a couple of turns. We're one turn off of the walls finishing around the mouth of Curveza. We have walls everywhere. It's very important. Yeah, assassins. That's going to be the answer to my problem of the enemy agents being too resilient. What do we do with this slot? Well, nothing right now. I have 200 gold. Impossible. I wonder if the Citadel of Dusk's standing garrison can handle this army. It's not a very large army, but it is a pretty elite one. I suspect we won't have enough time to get other lock over here before the Fortress of Dawn falls, but I do think we'll be able to take it back pretty easily. And then once we have it back, we might have to turn this into a food region. It pays for itself in food. 
Oh, it so was destroyed. So the the red lizard men have uh, have gotten the job done. Either that or the College of Pyrotechnics really stepped up. Yeah. I can't imagine there's a way this garrison wins this battle. It's alright. We'll lose it. We'll take it back. I don't know. Maybe Otherlock needs to sail east and actually burn down a bunch of Tor Elisor stuff until they leave us alone. I wonder if it would be possible to wipe them out. Hold on. Let's, uh, let's pull them up on the diplomacy screen and see what their empire looks like. Right, Infect Decay is back. Approach, but know this. You their are strength rank is 6. But they only have three settlements. Yeah, they're out in these islands. You know, this is the thing that our uh, our elf buddy over here could have elf buddy, our rat buddy over here could have dealt with. Yeah, you know what? Maybe that is what happens. As soon as other locks done recruiting, we're gonna go elf hunting all the way to the east. We're gonna send out an expeditionary force. Alright, we have basic walls up. Basic walls should be enough to defend this place from Waxti. I think. Hopefully. I guess we'll find out. A loaded shipwreck. Oh, uh, let's let's grab a battle enhancement this time, I think. Plus armor piercing damage, plus armor, plus weapon strength. Not bad. Salvaged heavy armor and an arsenal of weapons, which apparently are uh, on a timer. These are some, these are some free-to-play purchased weapons. I don't really want to lose as many guys as this is going to cost me. Let's let's build siege equipment until backup arrives. We'll take the uh, we'll take the fight with overwhelming numbers. Uh, there's no heroes in this army. I guess just keep scouting. We actually still don't even know what the northern coast looks like. Okay, there's a city here. It's not, it's not really worth anything. It's in the region of their capital. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like the I, I don't like the fact that we're probably gonna have to take and hold a bunch of this northern territory to keep rebels out because we really do not have the resources for that. Right, let's turn off taxation here. Try to keep public order under control to some degree. Boy, what does he do? You know what? We need somebody to keep track of what's going on in the elf town. So let's let's send him over this way. I think we have to be fairly careful with our gold. We have a lot of income, but it's very easy to spend a huge amount of money in this game. And if something crazy happens, I want to have a little bit of a stockpile to deal with it. On the whole, though, I think the campaign is going all right. As long as we don't, you know, lose the game to the Vortex. And we're doing pretty well keeping up considering that we don't even have a ritual resource site. Man, I wonder how many stacks Tor Elisor has that they're considered to be that much more powerful than us. And what do they need all these stacks for? They have this tiny little country. Okay, good. He's not going to the Star Tower. Boy, the Star Tower is a problem. That's a lot of instability. I haven't seen you. No. Still no. I don't know who you're planning to declare war on, but I don't want any part of it. Right, Hexwaddle's doing a, doing a thing, a ritual. Yeah, I hear you, man. Don't worry. Okay. Experience and money. It's all good. Oh, he just barely can't get back to land. Faithful servant of decay. 
Yeah, that's not bad. Map-wide leadership and melee attack debuff. And I'm assuming I can't, uh... Can't use these guys as reinforcements when they're in the boat. No. Alright, that's fine. So we'll attack next turn. Yeah, they're going to attack any moment now. Ooh. A pasture. Okay, well that right there is where I want to start my invasion of Red's territory. We could really use a pasture. And see, stuff like that is what I'm talking about. When you give the trade goods... When you give the goods some like extra meaning, it makes the map way more interesting. Oh, Guacamole Crater is ready to uh, cap out. I will definitely spend a large amount of money on that. I think that's very worth it. Uh, should we take... Yeah, we should take the upgrade... I guess in the Star Tower? The Star Tower is the place that would be most inconvenient for us to retake, so building up, building it up and giving an extra garrison first I think makes sense. We won't be too far away from the Blood Swamps. If we lose Blood Swamps to Rebels, we will figure it out. Although if we can take the Awakening before the Rebellion happens, the Rebels will spawn outside the Awakening because it's the province capital, and then our army will be in position to just immediately crush them. Okay, Nagarond completed the third ritual. And it looks like they actually had uh, stockpiled an awful lot of warp stone. They're almost on the fourth ritual already. Hexoadal's ritual has failed already? Or... Because they just started... I mean, maybe they just started doing the second one. I'm not really sure how to read this progress bar. Is it showing me everybody's warpstone pile or their actual ritual progress? All hail Hornet Rat. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Now this should be quite easy. Uh, and we're still in a place where I can't really afford to go hard on uh, the food. I mean, what are the penalties for being low on food? Minus 10 leadership on all forces. Minus income from battle. Not, not building income, so that's not even a big deal. Yeah, it's really, really minus 20 growth and minus 2 public order, minus 10 leadership are the things. Like, that's stuff we could work around. If it really came down to it, we could just survive having no food. Alright, let's go threaten these guys with our secondary army because we can definitely take them. Well, we'll be on the island in, I think, two turns. We're not going to be able to stop this from happening, but we'll crush them and retake the city and build it back up. It'll be fine. It does mean effectively losing a bunch of food, because I'm pretty sure I paid food to build that city up when we took it. Is there a settlement over here? Or what's going on with the... the... ground over here is very strange. Nope, it's just a weird marsh. Yeah, there's some stuff happening here that looks very significant, but I guess it's just ground cover. Uh, if you are a Warhammer fantasy lore person and you know something special about the Pox Marsh or something, something that makes sense of all this weird ground clutter, please do leave that in the comments. I'm always interested to hear. Because there was a lot of that kind of stuff in, uh, in Total War Warhammer 1. Places on the map that had a thing that was meaningful from a lore perspective, but wasn't really a, a game object. Okay, yes, the... The Rebels should appear right outside the province capital, because that's where they appear if you have it. And then we'll, yeah, we'll smash them real fast. 
Good. I, things are working out, mostly. I'm a little annoyed with all these elves. We really need to wrap up this war against the blue lizards, because I need to push back on the elves to our west. And if we can get a moment of peace here, we can maybe do the second ritual before engaging with the red lizard men. Hopefully. Yeah. We just have slings and yeah, this is... I don't know, maybe I should have fought that to uh, to maximize enemy casualties, but I think Otherlock's going to sh like completely shatter that army. Uh, this one, I don't know if I agree with their assessment that this is bad for me. Let's get a couple more charges of the Menace below, just enough to keep us out of red. Yeah, this I think is maybe winnable. Let's try it. They have some tough units, but they only have one unit of sauruses. They have a full strength unit of croxigors, but we might be able to panic them. The Bastildon should go down pretty quickly. This other unit of croxigors should go down pretty quickly. We should be able to kill their lord pretty quickly. Skinks run at the first sign of trouble. Like, this is fightable. We have these units of clan rats. Yeah, I think this is doable. This map's starting to starting to be real familiar. Starting to feel like home a little bit. So these guys can kite lizards pretty well as long as we remove the ranged attackers quickly. We definitely have to move on them though, they have a Bastilladon. What I really want is for them to start moving to engage. So if we can get that to happen, we can drop clan rats on the Bastilladon. It only has 440 health if we kill it quickly. Oh boy. Well, this should be pretty massively in our favor. Just volume of fire. Although I suppose that's an issue. You know what? I don't have time to wait on this. Come on, just get him. Just catch him. Well, we've broken their formation at least. Oh, this is going to hurt. This is going to be a hard charge. Alright, this King Cohort will lose straight up. Like, there's no there's no threat there at all. Alright, did you guys get in on the Bastilladon? We need to try to swing around here. Seriously, please kill this Bastilladon. Skirmish mode off, because they won't get any closer to the Crocs of ours. Are you about to give up because you're being shot at by skinks? Some sad... Even for, even for Skaven, who are notoriously bad at everything, that is sad. Yeah, so many of our units are just are instantly breaking. That's actually really frustrating. That's the end of that. Yes, yes. Night okay, the Bastilladon gained a bunch of health. Let's put turn skirmish mode back on. Wow, yeah, okay, well this, I guess, is how the game figured we were going to lose. My units were all going to just run away rather than fighting. Right, let's get everybody back together, because we help each other's morale. Alright, where is the place that we most need to put down a new unit of clan rats? 
If we could get people to just fight instead of running away, we could kill a lot of the dangerous parts of their army very quickly. Alright, that's fine. Kill the, kill the Bastilladon. Whatever it takes. Just get there. We're all so afraid. And I know, Skaven, like, that's the whole thing, but... The extent of it is a little silly. Okay, this thing's dead. There we go. Oh, it doesn't... When you click, your units are rallying. It gets them, uh... It centers the camera on them, but doesn't select them. It's annoying. Okay, let's finish the Croxagore. Uh, it still has actually kind of a lot of health. Get him! Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Their lord is dead. I'm swinging these guys around. Alright, try to keep those Saurus spears from regaining their morale. Alright, most of the enemy is breaking. It's just the it's just the big unit of Croc score, so we have to worry about now. Take heart, guys. We outnumber them. And I think they spent their. I don't know how this uh, primal instincts thing work. Okay, yeah, they spent it already, so now they just run away. I knew we could do that. I guess I actually got really worried <laughs> there about a moment in when all of our units broke at the same time. Yeah, we lost twice as many men as they did, but you know the important part was making them flee. We didn't have to kill them. Because losing that settlement would have been annoying. We'll take food off them. I guess it wouldn't have been too relevant. We do have an army right there. Alright, he's headed south. He's got a, probably a pretty slick army, but... It's all walled settlements down there. I don't know what he thinks he's going to be able to accomplish. We do have elves coming in from the west, though. We saw a big stack over there. I have walls on pretty much everything. Everything except the newest conquests. Right, they failed to wound Infect Decay. Yeah, we got all kinds of raids and stuff. Alright. Nice to get an ambush there so that they don't they don't get to retreat and we don't have to stick around. I think I'm gonna send Yeah, that's a real army. We have a good garrison though. I'm gonna send Skrulk to the north. He's gonna keep pushing, cause I think it's really important that we, uh, really important that we end these guys. I don't want to give them any time to recover. Four settlements. Okay, so this is this is it. These three, and then their capital. Let's put an end to this nonsense. These guys have survived for far too long. I should probably, like, equip my banners. I'll remember before the next battle, no worries. So, a magic and fire damage, breath weapon attack, howling warp gale only affects flyers, is this right? Target if flying unit, yeah. This seems like a pretty good buff. Right, 
So do I want him to fall back? Let's, yeah, let's have him fall back. And my plan is going to be, if these guys engage in the Siege of Quetzal, we'll, uh, we'll hit him from the side, get the garrison plus the secondary army. Because I don't think we should need two stacks to deal with anything up to the north. They didn't really take a lot of damage at the siege. Actually, I probably should have played it out manually for that reason, to damage them so that they wouldn't be at full health when they come out to sea. We might still beat them in the auto-resolve. We have some pretty good units, and they're just elves, but also maybe not. Okay, let's get you a Plague Furnace. Yeah, see, that's how you're supposed to do that. Okay, additional 9% chance of wounding. Nice. And we're on 20,000 gold now. Uh, we need... Yeah, we need to get walls up everywhere. I'm not particularly worried about upgrading this right now. Gold is less of a problem now than it has ever been before. Let's take a quick look at our province thing. Okay. We have no provinces in red public order and also falling. That's good. So what do we want to spend this huge amount of money on? Uh, Guacamole Crater could host more re-encruitment structure or re-encruitment recruitment structures. That way we'll be able to reinforce against the elves more easily. That's probably a good long-term play. So let's build up some recruitment stuff here. Uh, we don't actually get a ton of income from this region, so I'm not too worried about this stuff. What would be a good building to have? We should probably have a Plague Monk recruitment. And then we're good on public order. I don't need to upgrade the bell. We don't really need this thing anymore because we're not growing. Extra casualty replenishment rate in a place where we're going to do battle, probably, though, makes sense. Let's hold on to it. Uh, it's a... Uh... We have access to all of our technology now, right? Now we need the Temple of the Horned Rat. I'm assuming that's... Where is the Temple of the Horned Rat? Oh, we don't we don't have a level 5 bell anywhere. Okay. Well, we're working on that. It's is about to have a complete level 4 bell, so we can build that. Maybe I just hold 10k to use for like dumping really expensive buildings really fast. Uh, let's definitely upgrade at least this. We, we want to be able to recruit shield clan rats. We can make with the income upgrading in this place that has a port, two ports, and a gold mine. Yeah, wow, this is... We should have come down here and conquered the Colchen Plains more quickly. In addition to the pasture, there's a gold... There's a gold smelter and two ports. Like, this is a huge amount of money. All right, well, I think that is going to have to be it for us for today. Of course, other locks work is never done. Come back next time. Apparently... We have to go on an elf hunting expedition, and we'll see you then.